go and see my story about Eve Nance. Very, very sad story, but not as sad as this one, okay? This one is going to tear your heartstrings out of your chest. Now, the story of Paula Angel is one that is heart-wrenching. Not only was she beautiful, she was from a well-to-do family. She was a virgin waiting for marriage, as most women did back in that day. And a man by the name of Juan Miguel Martin took advantage of her. But Juan Miguel Martin soon found out that he messed with the wrong good girl. So let's dig into it. Las Vegas, New Mexico, 1860s. Paula Angel was about 18 or 19 years old. She was working as a seamstress. And back in the day, you know, women only had one ticket to independence and ticket to freedom, right? That was marrying someone who was either richer or just as well-to-do as themselves. Now, because women couldn't do much, but probably be nurses, midwives, seamstresses, you know, or as chauvinists would say, girl work, they didn't have many options, right, to make their own money because it was the 1860s. So, follow me. Paula Angel was minding her own business in Las Vegas, New Mexico, when a gentleman by the name of Juan Miguel Martin walked into the seamstress shop. Of course, he was smitten with her because Paula Angel was gorgeous, like gorgeous, gorgeous. And he started to like kind of press up on her, like, hey, you want to go out? Like, you want to go out? You want to go out? And so Paula was like, hmm. I don't know, like, I'm really waiting for the right one so I can go ahead and get married and live happily ever after. So Juan Miguel Martin was like, uh-huh, yeah, you're hot, though, so we should probably, like, go out, right? So, of course, as the story goes, and even today, Juan Miguel Martin pressed up on her so much that he kind of forced her into having sex under the guise of, of course I'll marry you. Like, why would I not marry you? Just prove your love to me by having sex. Now, as I said before, Paula's one ticket to a life of happily ever after was her virginity, much like a lot of other women during that time. We either had to marry into the wealth or we had to be untouched and someone else would like see us and pursue us, right? For some reason, men just really wanted untouched woman, even more so back in the day. But that's neither here nor there. So they're like kind of sort of dating, and Paula is really smitten with Juan Miguel Martin. So a little bit about Juan Miguel. He's also from a very well-to-do family in Las Vegas, New Mexico. His family is deeply connected to the judicial system in that area, right? So, Juan Miguel Martin can pretty much do whatever he wants to do and get away with it because Danny and Mommy can always buy off a judge, pay off a sheriff, etc., right? So, they're dating or whatever. He finally convinces Paula to... Hey, Jean! He finally convinces Paula to give up the goods, right? So, Paula's been holding on to her virginity all this time and she finally like, she's finally like, oh, I'll give it up to Juan Miguel Martin, so, of course, as the story would go, once they have sex, now Paula is in love, honey, like planning the wedding day, wedding dress, fabric, china patterns, you have it. She's ready to get married to Juan Miguel Martin. So, over the course of their quote-unquote relationship, Juan Miguel Martin just goes missing. And so, Paula starts to feel a certain type of way about that. So, she goes through a little depression, she talks to her sister, and she's distraught because she's like, no man will have me now that I've given myself to another man and I am now no longer untouched. I'm no longer a virgin. That is my best virtue, right? And so the sister was like, calm down. It'll be all right. It'll be okay. 
But Paula can't help but feel a certain type of way about that, as we all would, ladies. We would feel a certain type of way about a dude just ghosting us after taking our virginity. But nevertheless, Paula decides to seek out Juan Miguel and ask him, like, hey, what's the deal? Like, you said if I slept with you, you would marry me. You promised me marriage. I am no longer virtuous. No other man will have me. We have to get married. And so Juan Miguel Martin was basically like, no, sorry for you, but thanks for the snatch, you know? So he goes on about his business. So one night, Paula decides, let me go find out where he at because Juan Miguel is playing with me and he must not know how I feel about the situation. So she does a little bit of preparation. She packs a knife under her cloak and she sets out to go find Juan Miguel. She goes to his favorite local bar where Juan Miguel has a bit of a reputation for liking to party with a bunch of different women, right? So she goes to the bar, sees him in the window, of course, yucking it up with all kinds of different women. She waits until he exits the bar. She approaches him and says, hey, basically, what's going on with you? Like, we're supposed to be getting married. Well, at this point, Juan Miguel turns around and tells her, honey, I'm already married. I have a wife and five children. Five. So there's no way we can possibly ever get married because I'm not leaving my wife for you. Typical side piece drama. Come on, ladies. So after she hears this, Juan Miguel goes to walk off. She catches him by the shoulder, spins him around, and says, you have to leave your wife. I'm now damaged. Juan Miguel says, point blank, no, and goes to leave. At this point, Paula takes the knife from under her cloak and stabs Juan in the stomach. Juan collapses. He bleeds out very, very slowly. Paula does not flee. She does not run for, for cover or nothing like that. The police immediately take her into custody and they book her on first degree murder, okay? So here's the kicker and the very, very sad part. Now keep in mind, Paula was not out here looking for a man. The man came looking for Paula, pushed up on her, convinced her to give up her virtue on the promise of marriage, one that did not come to fruition, from a man who was already married with five kids. So Paula is in the holding cell at this point, or what could be deemed as a holding cell back then, right? And she was arrested so swiftly, only because Juan Miguel's family literally told the sheriff and the judge, no, you get her, you arrest her, and you hang her. She killed my darling son, who happened to be like a player and a bastard, and all kind of other shitty stuff. So, while Paula is in holding, the guards keep taunting her, walking back and forth from her cell, just yelling out different things to her. So, one of the guards in particular would come through every day and be like, hey, Paula, you have six days to live. Hey, Paula, three more days to live. And so with this, she was just like tore up about it. She would cry every day. So the time comes for her execution. Back in the day, you know, executions were by hanging, right? So it's time for her execution. And of course, crowds gathered to see the, the hanging of this woman because it was a big to-do back in the day. People were really sick and twisted. They were bringing the kids and everything else and lunches and all kind of different stuff to watch someone hang. So, typically, when you hang somebody, you bound their hands and their feet. That way, they can't flail. They also can't reach for the noose around their neck to kind of give them some slack, right? When you pull the plank from below them, they're supposed to drop. Either your neck snaps. Hopefully, it does. If it doesn't, you slowly suffocate as your windpipe closes up. So... The executioner was so 
eager to kill this woman, that it didn't bind her hands, right? Didn't bind her feet, okay? So she's standing on the back of this wagon. And the way it was supposed to go was the executioner would whip the horse. The horse would take off, pulling the wagon from under her. Paula would drop and hang and die. That's how it was supposed to go. That is not how it went, okay? So they go ahead and they start the execution. They string her up. Her hands are free. Her legs are free. The executioner whips the horse. The horse takes off. But before Paula has a chance to drop, she does this to the rope. And she's just hanging there, like legs flailing, and she's holding on for dear life for the rope, right? So, of course, people are like, oh my God, something is going wrong with the execution. Somebody help her, right? And so the executioner is just like, no, we'll just wait it out. Like she'll she'll tire like soon and she'll just go ahead and die, right? So her hands are still right here grip, gripping the noose. So they decide, ah, well, let's start over. Well, back in the day, you couldn't start over. If you had a botched execution and somebody survived it, they were set free as if the crime never happened. So the crowd was like, oh, no, no, no. She survived the execution. She gets to go free. She's a free woman. The executioner was not having it. He then goes, pulls the horse back under, the wagon back under her feet, props her back up. This time, binds her hands, binds her feet. Does it again. Whips the horse. The horse takes off. And now Paula is helpless. She's hanging. And because it is taking so long for her to asphyxiate, get this. The executioner then goes, wraps his arms around her waist, and hangs on her like dead weight. So now you have Paula hanging plus the executioner hanging off of Paula to kind of hasten the execution. By this time, the crowd is freaking mortified. They are mortified. People are getting up to leave. People are disgusted. People are sick to their stomach by what's happening. And after all of that, Paula Angel slowly asphyxiates with the help of the crazy-ass executioner. And that is the story of how Paula Angel came to be. I think it was the last woman to be hanged in Las Vegas, New Mexico. Now, there is a little bit of folklore that says... Um, People don't really believe that she was actually killed. People don't believe that she was actually hung because, you know, the way it was botched, people really thought that they cut her down and let her go about her business and was able to live a life of a free woman. But there are other um, outlets that also say, did Paula Angel even exist? There's no record of her existing in what was the judicial system back then. So there's a lot of spookiness, and then in that region still, there is, of course, the ghost story of the woman who lives in the tree, because what they hung her from was a cottonwood tree, supposedly the strongest tree in that region. The branches wouldn't break or nothing like that. So now there is the ghost story of the woman who lives in the tree, and supposedly it's Paula Angel lurking in the branches looking over that area. So, that is the story of Paula Angel, the good girl gone bad. Mind you, like I said before, Paula wasn't looking for a man. A man came looking for Paula and then took her virginity and then ended up being the reason why they took her life. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you love this video. Another Criminal Women Wednesday is coming up. Next time, I'm going to talk about Ruth Ellis from the UK. She's famous for being the last woman to be executed across the pond. Stay tuned. Talk to you guys later.